a Philadelphia-based uh, global alternative asset manager. Uh, we have over 16 offices globally. Um, and my role at the firm is, oh, I'm a dedicated co-investment professional. Uh, so we have a dedicated co-investment team uh, of 20 people globally uh, dedicated to evaluating co-investment deals. Uh, so evaluating direct deals and diligencing them uh, alongside uh, lead uh, GP partners of ours uh, and working through and investing and then monitoring uh, our portfolio of investments. So it's interesting when I started out as an M&A banker around the global financial crisis time frame, co-investment was not, was very small and not much talked about uh, or paid attention to. Uh, since then, it has grown to be uh, somewhat of an industry and certainly providing a significant portion of overall deal capital today. Um, so, you know, we get asked, at Hamilton Lane, we get asked a question a lot, you know, what do you think about co-investing, what the landscape looks like? I think partly because we sit in a unique position of, you know, overlapping both GP and LP worlds and thus having the privilege of of access to data and uh, you know, observing a behavior from both sides of the spectrum. Uh, and so no, no surprisingly, as, as private markets investing has grown and LP interest in co-invest has grown alongside that. Uh, and we hear uh, you know, LPs all want to do co-invest. Uh, and what we hear from GPs, however, uh, is that yes, there's interest but there's this disconnect between the interest that they hear all the time uh, and the ability of LPs to execute on that interest. So, you know, interestingly, we do a, uh, an annual survey of a broad group of our GP relationships every year, asking them questions around co-investment and trends. Uh, and they all say LPs, their LPs want to do co-invest, uh, but interestingly, just not a lot of them execute. So, for example, last year our survey indicated that you know over a half of the GPs uh, that we spoke with, um, less than 25% of their LP base uh, who say they won't co-invest ever transact on a deal regularly. So there's a disconnect between the interest piece uh, and then the ability to execute on a uh, dedicated co-investment program. I think there are challenges to uh, putting together a, a dedicated co-investment program and being a credible co-investor uh, with the GP universe. So I think the number of things that uh, GPs would like to see in order to be a good co-investment partner, uh, I think was mentioned, uh, speed and responsiveness are critical uh, factors. And GPs are under uh, oftentimes very uh, tight timelines when they're in sale processes that's highly competitive. Uh, they need their co-investment partners to move fast uh, and to be, to be there when they say they're going to be there with the capital on that time frame. Uh, so that itself is, uh, you know, presents some challenges to LPs who uh, just given their, their, their program and their resources and how their organizations are structured just cannot move that fast. And secondly, I would say being user friendly uh, means a, a number of things. But you know, for us, uh, our team, most of us, if not all, come from some kind of transactional background, uh, Wall Street, M&A, uh, working at AGP previously. So you know, we were at the other side of their table with them. So we know what they're going through as they're working with us uh, and being respectful of their time, which is very limited in these processes. Uh, and making sure that we are efficient with our diligence uh, on that company. So LPs, you know, to, to, to be a credible um, market uh, uh, participant, to be a credible co-investor, uh, I think it, it takes a little bit of time to build up that reputation in the marketplace as someone um, with a dedicated program and team what that GPs can come to readily and, and trust and be able to execute. Um, so that takes a little bit of time to build up that reputation. But you know, back to the, what I said earlier about 
you know, speed and certainty of execution uh, is, is very critical. And um, be able to demonstrate that, not, not just on one deal, but time and again on multiple deals with GPs, with different timelines, different types of deals, for them to be able to trust you. It's, you know, we, we think of it as, as a trusted partner, really, because you're in it with them once you invest for some time. So there has to be the mutual trust um, and, and credibility on both sides. As far as just general LP uh, returns for, for you know, general co-investment strategies, you know, I think the jury's out and it's a little bit of a, of a mixed picture. Uh, and, and that is partly because uh, some LPs uh, have dedicated co-investment strategies, uh, have a real program and team. Some LPs uh, are doing deals on a more ad hoc basis, picking and choosing one off, not doing them regularly. Uh, and, and maybe, you know, you know it's, a, it's a latter strategy. I don't think enough appreciation is paid to uh, portfolio, portfolio construction for a co-investment portfolio versus a fund portfolio construction because mm -hmm. fundamentally, you know, investing in a direct deal, the exposure is very different than fund investing. Um, and things like vintage year and sector matters a lot to uh, investing in a direct deal. Uh, it might get smoothed out at a fund investment level, but for direct deal, doing direct deals, you know, if, you, if you're not thoughtful about uh, portfolio construction and making sure your portfolio is diversified uh, and fits the risk profile that you're looking for, you know, the risk of, of r loss and capital impairment uh, could be higher uh, significantly in a, in a you know, co-investment portfolio. You know, first, I think we start from the point of view that co-invest can be additive and accretive to the relationship uh, if you do it if you do it well. Uh, and and part of uh, what we've been able to do and and thus build a great track record off of is uh, those things that in general make make for a great co-investor, which is uh, speed and execution uh, and being responsive, uh, whether the feedback is a no. Uh, or yes, but we need to get more comfortable with X, Y, Z diligence points uh, and generally being respectful of the, of the GP's time and resources and their attention and ability to manage your process. Our philosophy is we, we are partners. Uh, before we enter the deal, we are partners. We, we are generally passive partners. Uh, alongside uh, the lead GP who are, we are investing alongside of in any given co-investment deal. So before we enter into a deal, and um, because of that, uh, we are very focused on diligencing the, the GP piece, making sure that the GP is the right owner for that asset, if you will. Um, does their track record uh, show that they have an ability to manage and, and succeed on this type of asset, this sector, this geography, this size. Uh, where have they made money? Where have they lost money? Uh, do areas where they made money, do they look like this asset? Uh, so may, really doing very deep diligence on the GP's track record, their team, and whether they're well suited for this asset. And then of course, diligence on the asset itself. So those two pieces have to come together and be cohesive, and, and we want to be comfortable with both in order to move forward with any given co-investment. So once we are entered into that relationship and, and invested together, uh, we really rely and trust our GP partner uh, to make the right decisions for the company um, over the longer term. If it's a longer hold, um, we are typically in dialogue with them. Um, if, there's, if there are challenges and problems that haven't, uh, we haven't foreseen along the way, there's obviously uh, frequent dialogue around that. But you know, we, we are passive. We entrust uh, that responsibility to our, to our GPs. And that's why we spend so much time up front, right, really making sure that is a well-made match. <laughs>